Hi, and welcome back to Risk Matters. Today, we are diving into the world of finance, a subject we at Synobium Advisors specialize in. Specifically, we will be looking at something you might be hearing more about in the weeks to come, and that is the 10-year US Treasury yield. This is known otherwise as the T-bond. It might sound a bit technical, but trust me, it has a ripple effect on everything you pay for because it affects interest rates. It also affects where investors are putting their money. So grab a cup of coffee and let's break it down. First off, what exactly is the 10-year Treasury bond yield? It is the payment on bonds that the US government provides to investors, meaning the cost at which the US government borrows. Think of it as a return an investor gets for lending money to the US government for a decade. It is a benchmark loan contract, a foundational piece of the financial landscape. When the yield goes up, it means that baseline costs of borrowing money across the economy increase. The 10-year T-bond yield is like all other assets and it's affected by supply and, de and demand. If the demand is high, that means the yield drops. If it is low and there is high supply, then the yield goes up. In essence, Higher yield makes it more attractive to markets and to investors, seeing they are paid more by the American government to lend them money. However, higher long-term interest rates also reflect uncertainty in long-term economic conditions. Since a T-bond is the way that the US government finances its budget and repays its debt, the inability to sell more T-bonds essentially means that the US Treasury will not have enough funds to pay its debt and finance its operations. To attract financing, the interest rates then must go up for T-bonds in order for investors to put their money there. Now, how does an increase in long-term bond yields impact market rates more broadly? Fundamentally, independent central banks, such as the Federal Reserve in the US, set short-term interest rates to keep inflation under control. An increase in long-term interest rates in the market impacts the yield curve, i.e. the curve that describes the relation between yields on financial assets of different maturities. Interest rates on many other financial assets are closely linked to the 10-year Treasury yield. For example, mortgage rates will often follow the direction of the uh, Treasury bond yield. So the 10-year yield rises, and in that case, you will see mortgage rates creeping up depending on how the yield curve is impacted. And that makes it more expensive for people to buy a home seeing their monthly mortgage rates will go up. The same principle also applies to other types of loans, such as car loans and even business loans. Higher treasury yields can translate into higher borrowing costs across the board, potentially slowing down economic activity as it becomes more expensive for businesses to borrow and to invest and for consumers to buy big ticket items. But the impact doesn't stop at borrowing costs. A rising 10-year treasury yield also has significant implications for the investment world more broadly. When the yield on a relatively safe asset like the US Treasury bond goes up, it means that it becomes more attractive to investors. So why would investors take additional risk by investing in equities or corporate bonds if they can get a better return on a government bond which is much safer? This increased attractiveness of government bonds can yield to what is called a flight to safety. Investors might pull money out of riskier assets, such as equities, shares, particularly growth shares, and move it into the relative security of U.S. Treasury bonds. This can put downward pressure on stock prices, meaning they go down, and their long-term Treasury bond yield is directly related to economic conditions, such as a strengthening economy and potentially signs of inflation expectations. It is also linked to the uncertainty in markets and confidence in economic policy more broadly. For example, if a treasury bond investor, such as the Chinese or Japanese governments, which hold large portfolios of these assets, begin to sell, then it is a reflection of certain elements. One is an expected reduction of their trade balances vis-a-vis -vis the US. The other is an excess of supply of treasury bonds relative to demand, forcing the yield curve to rise. In this scenario, investors might determine that a higher return on riskier US assets is needed in order to compensate for the eroding effect of higher supply and demand. The US government and President Trump, however, even though facing higher T-bond yields, are pushing for a reduction in interest rates. What can the president do to influence the short-term interest rates, seeing the decision to lower rates is, is uh, made by the independent central bank? One effective way, probably the most effective way, is to slash the budget deficit in order to reduce the borrowing of the American government.
To better understand the logic, you also have to account for other factors that may influence this direction. Most critically, the strength of the US dollar. At the same time that treasury bond yields are going up, the US dollar exchange rate against foreign currencies, such as the uh, euro and the British pound, will go down if long-term policy is perceived as not credible. The dollar, in essence, is being devalued. So let's combine all of these factors and their effect. The excess supply in T-bonds means that fewer investors will be interested in investing them. A US dollar devaluation leads to investors selling off their US investments and, and investing in what they would perceive as safer economies. The introduction of tariffs will probably impact inflation rates and the cost of living. And then on the other hand, a US dollar devaluation and no, a lower interest rates will lead investors to invest in the US, seeing their foreign currency is worth more in US dollars and borrowing money becomes cheaper. US com manufacturing competitiveness will increase and the rest of the story will go on. In decoding the Trump administration economic policy, or at least analyzing what we have seen so far, it is critical to factor uh, the, um, the strength of US borrowing. A US dollar devaluation effectively means that the US government now owns less to foreign countries. And that, of course, will have an impact on uh, US government policy. So what is the outlook? Let's talk about three things. If the US deficit is not reduced, it will require higher yields on US T-bonds. If tariffs stay high and levels and at the levels announced and demand from China and abroad for US bonds decline, then US interest rates will go up. If the Fed is pressured into lowering short-term interest rates, then inflation expectations will go up and long-term interest rates will go up. But as we all know, cutting government spending is very difficult to achieve. So if that becomes impossible, we could see tough times ahead for US corporates and consumers. So in closing, what's very important to note is that government spending over time has a very, very detrimental effect on uh, the strength of the economy. And that's not just applicable to the US, but also to the European Union. If you like this content, please help us by subscribing to the channel and liking this video. See you next time. Mm -hmm.